All right. Yay. So excited. More proofs, guys. Let's go ahead and start um, bringing in our newly learned angle pairs into uh, what we've already learned with our proofs. Our first proof here that we're going to go over um, in our given as well as our statement number one is saying that line M is parallel to line N. So we want to make sure we mark that. And we know that our first reason is always going to be given. Next, we're going to take a look at angle four and angle five are supplementary. Well, let's go take a look at where angle four and five are. Angle four and five are right here. We learned about a new pair of angles that when you have parallel lines cut by a transversal, and here we have that we have parallel lines, so we can conclude that angle four and five are indeed supplementary because they are same side interior angles. So we'll bring in our postulate, our theorems, new theorems and postulates from the other 3.5 uh, worksheet. We have our same side interior angles theorem. Okay. Next, we take a look at the measurement of angle four plus the measurement of angle five. So we're dealing with the same angles, but we're adding them to equal 180 degrees. Well, how do we know that they add to equal 180 degrees? Well, here I see supplementary, and here I see that 180 degrees. And on that little angle cheat sheet from last unit, we could see that if we see supplementary angles and 180 degrees, how do we know they add to equal 180? Because that's the definition of supplementary angles. It's what we've learned since the day we learned about supplementary angles. Now, we're going to move down to angle 5 is congruent to angle 7, and angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. So I have angle 5 up in here, and I have some angle 4, but now we're bringing in this 2 and this 7, and I'm not really seeing anywhere up here that's going to help me try to figure out why I'm stating this, justifying it. So I'm going to go up to my picture, and I'm going to take a look at angle, um, angle 5 and angle 7. So here's angle 5 and angle 7. We are saying that they are congruent. Let me actually put the congruent markings. We are saying that they are congruent. And then angle two and angle four over here are also congruent. Well, how do we know? Well, take a look at them separately. What kind of angles do we have here between angle five and seven? What kind of angles are angle two, angles two and four? These are your vertical angles. Therefore, we can conclude that they are congruent based on our vertical angle congruence theorem. Next, we're going to move down and we see that the only thing that's really changed here is now we had congruent angles, now we have their measurements are equal. Two and four, the angles were congruent, now the measurements are equal. So we're, this is one that really should start being in our, we should start seeing this, and recognizing this real quickly now when we go from congruence to equal measurements or the other way around, we're going to have your definition of congruent angles. Next, what we have is we're now saying that the measurement at angle 2 plus the measurement at angle 7 equals 180 degrees. So why did we come up with this? Well, if we look at angle 2 and we look at angle 7, we cannot say that we, we can't, well, we can base it off the parallel lines, but what we're going to do here instead is we're going to look at here that we have angle 2, our original um, adding up here, we had angle 4 change to angle 2, so we want to look between, there's going to be a few of these that we're going to look between, and why were we able to replace the measurement of angle 2 with the measurement of angle 4? Because they're the same, they're equal, so we can change them out. And then what we were doing was we were, to angle the measurement of angle 4, we were adding the measurement of angle 5. Well, we changed that out and we switched it with the measurement of angle 7. And why are we allowed to do that? Well, because again, right here, we're seeing that the measurement of angle 5 and the measurement of angle 7 are equal. So all we've done was we have replaced 
some different some angle measurements here so that replacement is that substitution last we're going to go to let's see what color I need now pink works we have angle 2 and angle 7 are supplementary so we're kind of going back up here we're talking about angle 4 and 5 being supplementary but this time we've gone the opposite direction. I have 180 degrees here, and then I see supplementary. But we're still seeing the word supplementary and 180 degrees. So that brings us back to, again, the definition of supplementary angles. Okay? So what you're going to do now is the next one on your own, and we will check it in class. And then the third problem we'll go ahead and work on together. So again, starting off always with our givens. We have three different givens, and they're listed all separately. So we kind of have three freebies here. Here, all three of these are given to us. All right. Now when we move down to the next part, I want you to see what's happened. We had the measurement at angle 3, measurement at angle 5, and we had 10x plus 8 and 25x minus 3. Now we have 10 times 5 plus 8 and 25 times 5 minus 3. So what happened? What did we do? Well, take a look. Instead of the x next to 10, instead of multiplying by x, we have 5. Instead of 25x, we have 25 times 5. Where on earth did this 5 come from? right there, one of our givens. So this is a simple algebra substitution. All we're doing is we're removing the x and we're substituting it in with what x equals. So this is a substitution. Now what we have done, we have measurement at angle 3 went from 10 times 5 plus 8, now it says 58. Measurement at angle 5 said 25 times 5 minus 3. Now the measurement at angle 5 is 122. All we did was we solved this and this, but we don't say solve. It's like our combining like terms, but we're having to do more than just you know add or subtract. So we, this is going to be our simplifying. The next step can be a little tricky to see what's actually going on, but we are going to be using um, a couple different things here. We're going to be using what we have um, on our step, well, I guess they're not numbered, but the previous step or statement, and let's take a look at what's happened. Now we're adding angle 3 and angle 5 together on one side, and we're adding uh, 58 degrees and 120 degrees, 22 degrees on the other side. What we're doing here is we're keeping the measurement at angle 3 on the left of the equal sign and we're keeping the 58 on the right side. Alright, so we're pulling from that equation right there. What I want you to see is that we're adding on both sides, which, you know, leads us to, okay, if we're adding on both sides the equal sign, we have addition property, but we've learned you have to add the same thing on both sides. Ladies and gentlemen, the measurement at angle 5 and 122 degrees are the same thing. They look different, but in the statement above, it tells us they are equal. So even though they look different, we are adding the same thing to both sides. So this is our addition property. It's a little different than we're used to, but we have seen something like that if you've watched all the videos, right? Next, what we're doing to get to the next statement here, we still have the measurement angle 3 plus the measurement angle 5, but now it's equal to 180 degrees. All we did was combine these like terms to get that 180. So this is your simplify. Again, if you like the combine like terms, we actually did combine like terms on that one. You're going to see something we just saw in the previous one here now. 
and we are going to move down to now the two angles are supplementary. When we say the two angles add, the measurements add to equal 180 degrees, and then they're going to be supplementary. So we have our supplementary and 180 degrees. This is your definition of supplementary angles. Lastly, we are proving that these two lines, line L and line M, are parallel. Notice, we have not been told that anywhere. So, in order for these to be parallel, we have to take a look at what kind of angles we're looking at here. And we're, if we look at angle 3 and angle 5 up here, we're saying that they are supplementary. And take a look. If a line L and line M are parallel, these will be supplementary. Angle 3 and angle 5 are on the same side of the transversal in their interior. So we have same side interior angles. And since we're saying that they're, they're supplementary, we're proving that the lines are parallel. So here we have our same side interior angles theorem. So here, we're not told that the lines are parallel. We're told that the angles are supplementary. So it's the opposite of what we did previously, where we, were, we knew the lines were parallel. Now we're proving the lines are parallel. The last problem on here will be yours to do, proving those lines are parallel. Good luck, and we will go over these in class.